All right, welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we'll be doing a review of the Carnot cycle and working a quick example. Hope you find it useful. Okay, uh, after our review of the Carnot cycle, I'm just going to work a quick example problem. Uh, we will be giving the temperature of the high temperature reservoir, the energy input into a Carnot engine operating on a cycle, of course, and the temperature of the low temperature reservoir. We will be asked to calculate the uh, thermal efficiency, the Carnot efficiency, and the amount of energy rejected to the uh, low temperature reservoir. Okay, let's uh, review the uh, Carnot cycle. Uh, we're going to be taking heat input from a uh, high temperature reservoir. That's going to go into a heat engine operating on a cycle. And hopefully we're extracting some work out. And we will be rejecting heat to a low temperature reservoir. Now let's uh, go through this on a TS diagram. And you'll note that I put temperature in ranking. It could be Kelvin, but it should be an absolute temperature. Uh, TS is going to be a pretty useful type of diagram to uh, visualize a Carnot cycle. So the first process is isothermal heat in. A Carnot cycle is an ideal uh, cycle. And so uh, the most efficient way to use energy is to be able to transfer it in isothermally. The next process of the uh, Carnot cycle is isotropic workout. And again, it's isentropic, so it is a perfect turbine, no friction, no uh, energy losses. Uh, and so uh, that is our second process. Third process is isothermal heat rejection. And to complete the cycle, we need to put some work back in, and we're going to do that isentropically with a perfect pump or whatever. So those are the four processes as shown on the uh, TS diagram. Now let's review cycle efficiency. In thermodynamics, uh, cycle efficiency is typically, you know, what do you want out divided by what it costs. And what are we hoping to get out of a heat engine? Well, it's useful work. And what are we paying for? What does it cost? Well, typically it's the, uh, what well, is the energy in from a high temperature source or high energy source. And again, as I've already stated, the uh, cycle efficiency in that workout divided by the heat in. And in terms of this cycle, it's going to be the work of the turbine, which is producing work, minus the work of the pump, that's the net work out, divided by the heat in. Okay, well, this is true for any uh, heat engine. And let's uh, go ahead and simplify the numerator a little bit using conservation of energy for this cycle. And we could say the heat in plus the work of the pump is equal to the work of the turbine plus the heat loss. Solve that for the net work, and it's equal to the difference in the heat in minus the heat out. So here's our equation for uh, cycle efficiency. Again, this is true for any uh, heat engine. Uh, we have not done anything specific for a Carnot cycle, but it's also going to be true for a Carnot cycle. Okay, so we're going to save that equation up here because we'll be using it again. Now to make things a little bit more specific to a uh, Carnot cycle, we need to do a quick introduction to, about entropy. And every professor tells you you can spend several semesters on entropy and not cover everything, and we're certainly not going to do that here. Uh, but real quick, uh, entropy is a property, and its definition of the change in entropy is equal to uh, incremental heat transfer divided by the absolute temperature, and that type of process that it's going through should be internally reversible. So it is a uh, property, and so uh, we can we want to be able to find the uh, uh, the change in that property from state one to state two and we can do that by integration and for our particular processes involving heat transfer for the Carnot cycle they are isothermal so we can pull the temperature out of this integral sign and so we get the change in entropy is equal to the amount of heat transfer divided by the absolute temperature and we can solve that for the amount of energy transfer Okay, so let's apply that to our isothermal heat in process. And so we can calculate QH, our heat in is equal to the change in entropy times the absolute temperature of the high temperature reservoir. And the amount of heat transfer is shown by this red rectangle. It is the area under the uh, process curve for isothermal heat in. Now let's do a similar type thing for our, let's do the same thing for our isothermal heat out. So now our equation for uh, the amount of heat rejection is based upon the same change in entropy times now the low temperature reservoir. And again, the area underneath the curve 
uh, represents the uh, amount of uh, heat rejected to the uh, low temperature reservoir. So we stated previously that the uh, net workout is the difference in those heat transfers, and so visually, it is the area enclosed by this Carnot uh, cycle. And it's the uh, green area shown for this rectangle. A little bit of a sidebar is that uh, based upon our cycle efficiency, the, the uh, actual a visual indication of the cycle efficiency is going to be the area of the uh, network out divided by the area of the heat in. Okay, going back to cycle efficiency, uh, let's uh, substitute in our equations for our, that we determined for our Carnot cycle. These are Carnot cycle specific. Plugging those in and the change in entropy for each of these terms are the same as we can see in our TS diagram. So that simplifies. And so this is an equation to calculate the Carnot cycle efficiency. And I need to reiterate that all these temperatures need to be in absolute. Okay, let's get into our example problem. And first, let's determine the uh, Carnot thermal efficiency. We're going to need some temperatures to do that. Our heat source temperature is 1205.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Our heat sink temperature is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll be using this for the second part. Our energy input is 473.9 BTUs per cycle. Okay, so calculating the uh, Carnot efficiency. Pretty straightforward. Keep in mind to convert to absolute, we add 459.67 to degrees Fahrenheit, pain ranking. Doing the algebra, plugging in the numbers, and we get our cycle efficiency of 0.672, or as we typically say, 67.2% uh, efficient. So that is the answer for part one. This is the best efficiency for any heat engine operating between these two reservoirs. Now to calculate the amount of energy rejected to the low temperature uh, reservoir. Uh, again, uh, we've already calculated the cycle efficiency and we have a, the equation for that. So we can solve that for our heat rejection term. And it is equal to the energy in times the quantity one minus cycle efficiency. So plugging in the known values, we obtained that the amount of heat rejection is 155.3 BTUs per cycle. Okay, well, that was a, a quick review of the Carnot cycle and a quick example. I hope you found it useful. And so uh, please like and subscribe and have a great day.